as we're ramping up to play the Washington Commanders at home here in week four and try to get our fourth consecutive victory this season. Although we might be flawed, we're going to look at what we can do to be successful. What's wrong with Jalen? What he's excelling at actually better than last season up to this point. Who's hurt and how that will affect the game as well as the pick for this week. What's up, it's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video and I kid you not, that's my real name. You see the title. It's concerning if you're a uh, fair weather fan. Eagles future headlines. What's wrong with Jalen Hurts? And a makeshift secondary. Also, the special teams are finally a strength for the Eagles. We'll see why. Is Hurts broken? The short answer to this is no. And the answer to all of the Fairweather fans and the pundits, hell no. There's nothing wrong with Jalen. He isn't his 2022 MVP self, but we all knew that this was going to be a an uphill battle, an uphill climb after you have success. After you put 16, 17 plus games of tape, including the playoffs, um, out there, teams are going to come in, dissect that, and they're going to approach you um, drastically opposed to the way they did last season. And that's what we're seeing from defenses. We're seeing um, light boxes, which actually makes the run game um, go and makes it a better uh, go for us to go that route. And um, it le leads towards us having, you know, 30, you know, 30 plus 40 plus carries, including Jalen Hurts, having 200 yards plus rushing, which isn't a bad thing. Only for the fans who want to see us air it out who believe we're, we're a true uh, Don Coriel offense, which we shouldn't be. We should all be, always be using the run to set up the pass and having that be our true staple. Um, but with them approaching him, you know, with, uh, you know, seven, eight man zones, dropping guys in the coverage, it's going to lead to us having to have a more patient approach. Um, they're taking away what we did last year. I'm arguing with a fan right now on YouTube He's talking about, oh, well, uh, Jalen Hurts doesn't look comfortable. Of course he doesn't. He wants to go over the top, the explosive plays, the one-on-one -on -one coverage that we had with Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown airing out last year. Teams aren't giving us those same easy looks, and they didn't know what to do with their, with their offense last year. They do know what to do this year. Um, load load the, 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 the zones, the areas full of men, and, you know, pause. It's going to lead to a slower depth uh, approach by paper cuts and they know that it's going to test our our discipline um we're gonna and every offense is going to take their shots you know or should take their shots downfield but it's going to lead to us looking to hey we did this in 2022 dead that we are not that offense we have to approach in a smart cool calm and collective uh, manner that's why deandre switch is going off because you know, we're facing boxes that are light you know with six men and with versus, you know, five guys, and then Jalen as an extra factor, he, you know, that being, you know, an even numbers game, we'll take that any day of the fucking week. That's why Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, um, Landon Dickerson, uh, were on the sidelines, uh, were on, on the field telling the coaches to do this. Run it fucking back. Let's run it until they can't stop it. And they haven't been able to do so. So why would you change that approach? It's not that Hurts is broken. He's, he's pressing. And also factor in that there are new constituents to this offense. The option route um, that hurts through the pick on to Devin White, um, the linebacker, um, he was expecting Swift to most likely sit down in that zone. But that would have been foolish because Devin White was hovering in the area. So he would have been able to hit him, make him drop the pass or pop the ball up in the air. It, was, it would have been a dangerous pass. The option that he chose to fake, you know, and then go in for the angle route. Yeah, so he was heading towards coverage, but he still had a few good yards separation, you know, to catch the ball and, and then uh, get some yak. And I'm not talking about cognac, uh, you know, Uncle Shea Shea, he's, he's sipping on his podcast, Club Shea Shea. No, he, you know, would have gotten, you know, maybe eight yards and, or he could have cut up field and uh, seen some, you know, some more green grass. But, you know, Jalen, for me, in my opinion, I don't know the play called, uh, what responsibilities were on that, on that play, chose wrong. Um, and this is going to happen when you're working with new teammates that you haven't um, had an extensive time, you know, with. Um, he's had, you know, time with Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown for more than a season. It's it's more a little bit more than a season, but it's more than just one um, offseason. 
So things are going to happen like that. Um, and also, we're gonna, you know, you the, the good end and the bad end of that. You saw the old media as a kid's crazy play um, where you told them to go upfield and there's trust there. Um, and they've been able to, to sync up, um, at least on that field, uh, on that on that day. And then we saw the bad end with, with him and, and Swift, which, you know, should have been a play for positive yardage. First down, but in it, you know, going awry. So you got to be patient. We got a new O, uh, o coordinator, O uh, D coordinator. Um, he's stepping into a new position. Hasn't called players at this level. You add all that in, and new players, um, new eyes through which we're seeing the offense, new expectations uh, with which you want to command the quarterback and have him, you know, execute a different way. It's going to bring about growing pains. And that's just it. And, you know, the Bucks secondary isn't chopped liver. They, they were bad at some things, but, you know, they presented a good challenge, especially with that corner um, that was in there. That was uh, Jamel Dean, number 35. The secondary stepping up. So, yes, we're seeing uh, what we thought, you know, to be one of the weaknesses of the team. At, well, it's safety. You know, it'd be a decent, you know, um, a decent point. We know I knew Reed Blankenship was going to be steady this year. And he's shown that. Um, but Justin Evans coming in and playing, you know, with a solid hand. Even in the last game, Terrell Evans, who had up to this point had played, had shaky play, um, held it down with his 41 snaps and uh, didn't look out of place. Whether that will be the case going forward, I don't know. But, you know, it gives us some comfort that he's not going to look lost out there. Um, so, you know, Darius Slay, he's having a good season. Bradbury is having a solid season. Only being back for one game, but, you know, um, he acquitted himself not too badly, giving up a couple of plays. And with especially at a new position for him in the slot, but um, we'll take what we're getting there. But you know, we've had I didn't even think about it, we had season in ending injuries, uh, or not season ending, sorry, we've had guys going IR in games one and two. Um, Nicobe Dean in the first game, he's coming back uh, in week six, and he's eligible to come back. And then we had our uh, you know, talented but often injured Avante Maddox slot corner go down. So, I mean, that's going to change uh, the juxtaposition, the leverage, um, the consistency there uh, at those positions. And those two guys, I mean, one was kind of just coming back into the field with Avante Maddox, and um, one was trying to establish himself as a new starter. So that's going to throw you know things in disarray. And all things considered, Sean Desai is getting a good to very good job with what he's had to work with. And, I, you know, like I said, he doesn't have, you know, the worst pieces, but we've had some guys missing. And uh, guys are stepping up. Josh Joe, you know, he's getting used to a new role. As he gets more playing time, I think he'll get better. It'll improve. So we're uh, also looking at that. And special teams, looks explosive. We have new guys down there. Sidney Brown, he's he's he plays at 120%. Uh, excellent coverage. Um, the guy who got out of Georgia, I can't think of his name right now. The corner. Um, he is not going to be starting anytime soon, but he's providing quality uh, coverage on the special teams units. And... That's a credit to him. So you, you've um, the much ballyhooed unit, uh, Michael Clay's, getting better. So, I mean, it's just a collaborative effort. Offense, defense, and special teams are getting better as we ramp up, as we, you know, progress throughout the weeks. And this is always going to be a work in progress. Actually, defense is playing better than we expected the offense to be. And they're holding down for the O. So, um, but it's, it's, you know, we don't... Um, Excel and this is all three units and they're coming into their own at different paces. So I'll take that. And on that note of jo Jalen, uh, Jalen, who's Jalen, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts being bad. Let's look at um, a bit of his numbers. So um, he's ranked five. That's kind of irrelevant because it's a new season. But let's look at the raw stats. Um, he only has 600 and was that 40 yards passing, which is about, you know, 200 and so or so yards a game, 215 or so. Um, uh, just about right about 6.9 which is not a good marker um only three pass dds and then three inter uh, interceptions which is you know he's on way on pace to uh, excel um exceed what he did last year only 100 rushing yards and he doesn't look the same but teams are you know can try to contain him more um than rush up field and playing him differently than did last year similar to in the past game um on a different level though and he has one fumble so he has four turnovers throughout four um three games and three rushing TDs, he's, you know, he's a vulture. But he's actually has, a, you know, the highest um, completion percentage he's had over his career, versus his career. Um, 
he's he was 66 um and a half percent last year he's got 67 so he's actually more accurate this year but people aren't looking at that because that means he's being uh more judicious he's actually i mean he's uh very um accurate throwing the ball but it's just not ending up in the explosive plays because teams are clogging the lanes they're putting more people in there it's making the windows tighter he's actually fitting it in there better um hitting guys uh more often and but he's just not getting the plays over the top um we're getting plays where you know guys are getting um hit with you know he's hitting them and then they're making a move and they're getting yak you know m uh, We've had a couple of explosive plays to, you know, week, in week two to Devonta Smith, the touchdown and the 53-yard um, pass downfield. But outside of those, you know, plays, and then the old Mitty Zacchaeus last week, uh, this past week with a 34 or 35-yard touchdown, outside of those plays, it hasn't been too many. Um, and, yeah, there have been some drops. If you, you know, there's been some mitigating circumstances, weather and all that stuff, but, sorry. <coughs> it just <coughs> isn't clicking, you know. Like I said, because of the defensive philosophy, they're approaching Jalen Hurts very differently this year. Um, just be patient. And if you don't understand that, that's on you. Study. Understand the game. Um, see, you know, examine the film. Examine um, the, you know, the diagnosis and, and the exegesis that, you know, people are putting out there. So you can see for yourself what's going on. But... Um, he hasn't been terrible this year. He hasn't been the best, but he hasn't been terrible. And he's getting better as the games go on. So um, dive into the analytics. Look at the numbers. Look at the film. Look at the tape. And study for yourself why Jalen Hurts is actually playing decent this year. He's playing good in spots. Um, and, you know, I, I would say, but it's more good than you would think. He's playing uh, better than you'd think. It's just like a couple plays here and there, and then like him not being patient, which is something that he he needs to work on, and he knows that. Um, but he knows that the capabilities that you know that we have with his offense and what we truly can be, and we're like we're pushing, we're gonna get there. We're just not there yet. All right, we're gonna look at <coughs> some injuries. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that are impacting or that will impact this game. Oh, God, golly. Excuse me. <coughs> All right, so Sydney Brown was again DMP and hamstring. So it's not good that both of our sa safeties <coughs> key back up and our starter did not practice. He's, you know, just in Evans with that neck, we'd have an idea of, you know, where he is with that, but not training towards a good direction. Definitely, they don't, they don't practice tomorrow. Um, I'd, just, I'd say they, you know, be slated to be out or um, doubtful at the best. And that's wishing for the best there. Because Watkins, Watkins actually uh, upgraded to limited, but I don't think we should rush him back. I think we should, you know, just give him a couple more weeks, you know, because we don't need him in the interim um, with especially with Olamide Zacchaeus popping up with two catches for 58 yards, um, it'd be best to just you know preserve him until he's fully healthy, like this guy going be able to go uh, to go full. So hamstrings are at different levels, limited, you know, full, but um, I don't think he'll be hampered too severely going into the game. Fletcher Cox, you know, mostly just better in rest. Zach Cunningham, full upgraded from limited, so the roots are maybe getting better. Cam Jurgens still limited, but. Him have to play in the phone booth and getting up field, okay, you know, cool. Um, but I don't think it should be a big issue, even if it is. I, I feel confident in Sue Opeta coming in. He um played um decently when he came in for Landon Dickerson to, f to finish out the um, game last week with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Landon Dickerson with that knee contusion, he's a full go, so not really affecting him. And Boston Scott, full go after that. Um, have to, having to sit out with the concussion protocol, not clearing it in time, but he looks to be no problem. Um, Devontae Smith with that uh, that illness, he should be most likely to be able to go. So um, only the safety is that concern is concerning. We probably bring up Tristan, McCull Tristan McCullum from the practice squad 
and it'll be our third guy waiting in the wings and then maybe we can uh put somebody at safety i don't know it might be bradbury or it might be um uh, someone else who we uh, haven't designated for that role. But uh, the Washington Commanders, rookie running back, did not practice, but, you know, he's not really a big factor. The only starter here, really, uh, Logan Thomas, concussion, but full practice, so he's slated to go. And these two guys injured, but full go, so they should be no problem. I don't even know what this guy is, so um, we should be, I mean, they should be uh, good, but they're relatively healthy. Comparatively speaking to us, we're not even that injured, but, you know, still some concerns. All right, so we're an eight-point favorite. Um, and really, it's concerning that Sam Howell, how, well, for them, for us, we should be like them chops. He's in sack 19 times at the most this season. The next closest is 13, so he's just eating sacks. And it wasn't against world beaters. It's been against the Cardinals and the Broncos, who are not that good this year. So... That should be a big plus for us. And uh, the concerns, left guard, center, and right tackle. Famously, this guy here, uh, Wiley, who's a formerly of the Kansas City Chiefs, gave up like seven sacks last year. Had the audacity to brag that, you know, we didn't give up any sacks in the Super Bowl. The field is credited for that, not you, Wiley. So he's, he's still playing at, you know, an above average, uh, below average um, level. He's given up three sacks this year, so yeah. He should be in, in, yeah, that interior. You know those guys in the middle. We'll get into them later, but it's not looking good for the commanders, but we'll see. Because uh, they were the team that came in and uh, we, we went up to, to their house and they beat us um, in week eight or nine last year. So, um, yeah, they have a talent to force them, but I think we can deal with them. We'll get into that tomorrow or the day after. But anyways, we're going to get up out of here. Short video today. For me by my standards but you're not even watching you're not even here though but it's all good because i love making these videos and i love talking about the philadelphia freaking eagles we're get we're gonna get up out of here because like i said you're not even here but as always as always it's fly eagles fly and let's mother fucking go thanks for watching Check me out at Cintron, Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs, or other social media.